a stream. <laughs> we'll save that for another time. Um, I'm Jonas. I'm with Air Team. I'm here to tell you a little bit more about our crowdfunding experience um, and some of the things uh, that we uh, did uh, and some of the reflections also afterwards. Uh, just briefly, want to mention what Air Team is. A little bit about crowdfunding. Uh, our experience using crowdfunding to take us, uh, yeah, through our development and manufacturing, uh, and then end up with uh, some of the key key takeaways. So, just briefly, um, the problem is basically that enterprises are still uh, forced to use cables and adapters, and that's because consumer solutions focus on Netflix streaming and doesn't scale in an enterprise setting, and the enterprise solutions are too expensive or hard to use or doesn't cover uh, all platforms, and that actually uh, counts for, for both, of the, both of them. So what we created is a little dongle that you plug into a projector or a TV, install software on any computer, smartphone, tablet, and you can display your screen up there wirelessly. Um, and take care of actually some of the in enterprise grade uh, functionality to make sure it actually scales in an enterprise setting. In relation to crowdfunding, just, just high level, uh, a little quote from crowdsourcing actually, saying, by distributing tasks to a large group of people, you are able to mine collective intelligence, as assess quality, and process work in parallel. <coughs> and crowdsourcing is kind of crowdfunding's mother. Um, you can say, so crowdfunding is basically um, distributing the problem of uh, raising capital, basically, to the crowd. Um, and, uh, but it's also much more than that, and I'm, I'll get, get back to that in a, in a little uh, while. Just high level, some of the pros and, and cons as we see it, uh, using crowdfunding. Um, the first thing on the, on the pro side is that you can kind of claim an idea uh, before you actually have made the product. Um, so you can kind of have a perceived first move advantage in some way. You can, if, you, if done well, a crowdfunding campaign is a very big marketing stunt, um, and I will get, get back to that as well. Um, you can validate your idea at a very early stage. Um, so actually find out if people want what you're about to build, um, or how you tweak it to make sure that it actually fits their needs. Um, you can finance, of course, that's also one of the essential things. Um, your, your idea and your vision and you can get a lot of feedback. Um, so actually make sure that you can ask a lot of people, should I make this button red or blue? And make sure you, you make it the right color uh, first time. There's also some cons that you should bear in mind. Uh, things as public failure. Uh, it could either be that you launch something and nobody wants to support you. Um, maybe you should take that as a, lear that as, as a learning um, and adjust. But it could also be that you get funded and you're not, not able to fulfill. And that's a, a pretty public failure. Uh, so bear that in mind. There could also be IP concerns. Um, you're kind of presenting your idea and project um, in a very early stage. So, um, and, and probably at a time where you don't have a lot of funding to secure patents and stuff. So you should also bear that in mind when, if, if you're about to launch on a campaign yourself. Um, and last thing is that Crowdfunding, or I guess any campaign, takes a lot of time. Um, so it's actually focused away from creating and, and working on the product. Um, so you should bear that in mind as well. It takes a lot of time away for, for actually bettering the product. Um, OK, so a little bit about our experience launching at Indiegogo. Um, it was basically, we, we, we started out uh, a little more than two years ago. Uh, with the idea and all of these things, making the prototype. Uh, and from the beginning, we really wanted to start with crowdfunding. Um, and that too, again, uh, using the social sphere to fund market uh, and get feedback and validate what we were about to build or yeah, the prototype we had, we had built. <coughs> um, so we started, started preparing for that uh, from the very beginning and launched uh, November 21st of 2013. Um, and a little bit about the preparation. Um, basically, we wanted to make a very, very big splash uh, when we went live. 
uh, at Indiegogo. <coughs> uh, we found out that the way Kickstarter Indiegogo platforms work uh, is that they have these algorithms that are sorting out popular projects um, and highlighting them at one of their popular projects pages. Um, and we really would like to be featured on one of those uh, on the Indiegogo um, because it drives a lot of organic traffic uh, through their community to your project. Um, and uh, so, of course, it's a, it's, a, it's a good growth hat to actually be featured up there. Um, so we know we, we needed a, a big launch. Um, and some of the things we did was creating some teaser videos, so like trailers as you have for a movie that are, that's about to launch, uh, to kind of building up the anticipation from, from the crowd. Um, and, and had that live three days before, then two, one, and at the day we launched. Um, and then we really wanted to make sure that when we shouted out about ourselves, it, need, it needed to be good uh, copy, video, illustrations. Um, so we worked a lot, of course, also of presenting the idea uh, and, and, and product and vision in a very, very good way. So people hopefully spend some time on our site uh, when we shouted out and they, they got to know us. Um, and then we prepared, uh, took forever, uh, but a, a hack because we didn't have anything basically. We thought, okay, we need to inform people uh, one by one. So all of the founders wrote like 100 personal emails each to people in our network that uh, we thought could either help spread the word or maybe even contribute uh, to the project. And we had those ready in the draft folder and, and were, were ready to, to present when we, when we launched. Uh, and of course, we also scheduled some social media messages and, and all of these things to kind of blast out in, in one go. Um, and what happened was, was, was this. Um, this is the visits on our campaign page. Um, and the very first day you can see that, that that was actually the day we got the most visits in the entire campaign. Um, what happened is that people start tweeting and backing um, and somebody submitted it to Hacker News and Reddit and, and all of a sudden uh, there was traffic from, from all over the place basically. Uh, and we broke through the Indiegogo surface, so we got also featured in their newsletter uh, first and then became project of the day a little later um, and kind of broke through the surface, um, fortunately. Um, and then I guess, yeah, so the next question is how do you keep the momentum? Uh, the other tops here I will get back to, it's basically CES and the, the final sprint. Um, but the key takeaway here is start off crazy big, uh, no matter if it's a crowdfunding campaign or any type of campaign, uh, and make sure you, you break through the service in, in creative ways, of course. Um, then going into, now that we had like made, made a bit, big splash, uh, we wanted to make sure that all the people that was not quite uh, ready to actually contribute yet, they got all the little check marks they, they, could, uh, they could have uh, about us as a company, as a product, and a, as an as a, yeah, entire uh, campaign. So uh, we, valid, we tried to validate through content. Uh, one of the things was just showing how fast we got funding and kind of the traction and the momentum uh, with this kind of old content uh, as it looks now to me. Uh, we updated the design on the product um, and, sh and shared that. Uh, and made sure to also show that we're also working on the product, not only on the campaign. We, uh, of course, shared um, uh, so awards and press <coughs> and, I mean, all of these things uh, and made sure that uh, even the little ones in the beginning was smaller, smaller check marks um, than some of the other ones and the bigger ones could then use uh, also as a validation. Um, and then we tried to make, uh, make ourselves like really transparent in some way and, and tried to make, make sure that there was also people behind Airtame and it was not only a company uh, and we tried to be really transparent uh, and real time with some of the video material we created. Um, also doing, for example, CES, which we attended um, in, in 20, 2014. So short key, uh, key takeaway here as well, that you can really validate yourself through content, get all the little check marks. Of course, it also started out for us as very small but make sure to, yeah, to get it out there through channels or whatever uh, medium so you can get all the little check marks. And not to brag, but again, to get all the little check marks uh, 
for, for people and better the conversion, which I will get back to. A little bit about growth hacking in, in itself. Um, now that we have had reached uh, some, uh, a little community and some users uh, and contributors, we wanted to, to uh, or we thought about how can we tap into these people and, uh, and let them help us create the, the further ripple effects uh, to, uh, to reach out to even more people. Um, and we are big fans of growth hacking as well. And the good thing about Indiegogo is that you can link it up to Google Analytics, for example. They also provide you with a lot of analytics themselves. Uh, so we knew some of the sources and like key markets and some of these things. Um, and we could, we could drive some campaigns uh, through that. And it was not like crazy things. It was like basic competitions uh, that we did. Uh, for example, just like, or uh, like on Facebook and retreat. Uh, on Twitter to, uh, to, uh, to win an air team. Uh, and and we, uh, we looked then at the numbers and tweaked the campaign a little bit. Uh, and actually, initially, we started saying this is the last 20 days of our campaign that we're doing this com competition. But what happened is basically that it took over our social channels. So all we could share was something in relation to the campaign. So, uh, so we needed to stop actually doing that. Uh, to, to have room for other stuff that we would like to, to, like, uh, like to share because um, else people got sick of us. Uh, we just took over everybody's news feed, which I guess is a good problem, but it, there's also time to, to stop. Um, and the other thing, as an example, is that you also, we, we had reached a lot of people, um, and another little hack you could do is then make it easy and attractive for people to actually uh, buy a, a little extra. Uh, now that you are inside the door in some way. And uh, a simple thing was, for example, the Black Friday deal that we did. Uh, a secret perk that you could do on Indiegogo, so just reaching out directly to people uh, that, uh, that contributed and say, look, you can get another one for $69. Uh, you don't need to pay for shipping, uh, that kind of stuff. So that's some of the examples. Uh, so key takeaway here, or maybe for the entire event, is that you can really hack the system. Uh, and this is some of the, one of the ways to do it. Then, um, again, because we, we wanted to tap into the collective intelligence of, of, the, of all the backers, uh, we uh, made a big effort out of making sure that we got a lot of feedback from these guys uh, to, to better the, the product. Um, so we had, for example, this page up where people could share their ideas, uh, vote on existing ones, or contribute with new ones. Um, and uh, and that matched with some of the surveys we did uh, to kind of platform uh, uh, percentages and use case and some of these things. We then uh, prioritized, oh, there's a little mistake there, some of the stretch goals that we did. Um, this is mobile support, by the way. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and normally what you do in a crowdfunding campaign, if you are fortunate enough to, to hit your goal, you, uh, you post new stretch goals, um, basically saying, if we get more, you also get more. We can, we can do more, we can better the product. Um, and, and these stretch goals here, I will not go through them today, but was prioritized actually by, by the crowd. So when we then posted them, it was also a really good ef effect because it was actually some of the things uh, people wanted. So they got, they helped spread the word even more, the, the existing contributors, because they would really like to, to have these stretch goals as well. Um, so utilize the crowd, uh, and the power of the crowd to, to build the product and give people what they want, because that's also a viral effect in itself uh, in, in, in a campaign like this. Of course, the goal is to fund your project, um, or whatever the goal of the campaign, campaign is, Make sure that people know what to do. Basically, so this is a short uh, takeaway here. Make sure that throughout your communication, people know what to do and it's easy for them to do that. Um, because uh, else you will, you will lose people in the funnel. Then, after a lot of uh, sleepless nights and all of these things, and a lot of learnings, uh, we knew that in a crowdfunding campaign, you raise the most funds in the beginning and in the end. And of course, we would also like to, to roll one big snowball uh, out in the end using what we have learned throughout the, the campaign. And um, so we took what we learned from the, some of the competitions, upselling techniques, uh, social sharing, all of these things, uh, and, and yeah, just 
let the ball roll. And here's what, what happened basically. Uh, this is the campaign activity, uh, so uh, funds raised per day. And you can see in the beginning, when, when we had the most visits, uh, we raised around $30,000 uh, in, in that day, uh, which was like overwhelmingly good. The second uh, big one here, uh, around 100000 was when we uh, won the award as best startup of CES uh, and got a, and a gadget feature and, and things like that. Uh, so a lot of good press. But this is, this is the last day when we actually rolled out, uh, had competitions, uh, uh, shared the, the message of people being able to order an extra because it's kind of we're closing right now the campaign and all of these things. So we raised almost 200000 um, the last day. Uh, so it's good to have a, a closing of your campaign and a clear closing to uh, kind of convert uh, the last people that's kind of in between. So yeah, key takeaway, I mean, end big and succeed with, with social. This is just uh, some of the stats uh, from our social channels uh, from when we started to until we ended our campaign. So in, in about two months. Um, and the, and the, vis, uh, the views on our video um, to sum up, whether it's a crowdfunding campaign or any kind of campaign or product launch, start off big, validate yourself through content, get all the little check marks, hack the system, you can do some really cool things there. Uh, utilize the power of the crowd to better your product. It's a really good hack in itself. And of course, you should make sure to deliver on your promise. Um, and you should end big. Uh, use what, what you have learned and, and end big and embrace an entire mix of, of crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, and, and social media. They can really do some, some big things. Um, and maybe to end with uh, the things that we're looking at right now when we're about to hit the market is also more like product-related hacks. Um, so we would like to, when we actually start fulfilling here in a short period of time, to make sure when people get their air teams, that they could actually help spread the word even further. Um, and transparently, the things we're looking at is, for example, our splash screen. So basically, when you plug in Airtame and you're not streaming to it, uh, could show a little home, a uh, little uh, uh, URL, basically saying, if you're new to Airtame, uh, visit this link. And that's the only link we will have on the splash screen, so we can know we know all the people that goes into a meeting room and look at that link and, and sign up comes from from that kind of uh, situation. Uh, that could be one of the things. Uh, Another thing could be if people steals it, they would need to buy 100 when they plug it into a, their own screen uh, to unlock that or whatever kind of thing. Um, yeah. But it's just uh, a little freestyle here in the end on, on what we're then trying to do. Yeah, thanks. That was. Thank you.